Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today is Friday, March 7th, 2008. And I am talking to you today from the headquarters of Americans for the Enforcement of Attorney Ethics, AEAE. AEAE is an attorney watchdog group that advocates the strict enforcement of attorney ethics and governmental ethics. I started AEAE in 1974 and our job is to help give individuals procedural advice on filing attorney disciplinary complaints against attorneys. Our job also has grown to investigate government officials who are involved in corruption in government. We have a situation in Washington, D.C. where John Dubas, the Under Secretary of State, has failed to take action on attorney disciplinary complaints which have absolute evidence, in our opinion, of fraud on the Patent Office. He's failed to even send those particular attorney disciplinary complaint that I filed on September 7th of 07 against Lance G. Johnson, David Abrams, and Alfred Goodman from the law firm of Rolands. This is very disturbing to us, where a government official such as John Dubas, D-U-D-A-S, the Under Secretary of Commerce refuses even to mail a complaint. But the issue I want to discuss with you this evening is more personal. It involves parental alienation syndrome and stalking. I have been involved in a divorce proceeding against a Loyola University Hospital neonatal intensive care nurse who was my former wife. I cannot mention her name because there's a court order that precludes me from mentioning her name on this blog. So I respect that court order, although I argue that it violates my First Amendment rights of free speech. However, be that as it may, I can't mention her name here. We had three children together. In 1991, we had a boy. In 1993, we had a girl. And in 1995, we had another girl. I cannot also mention my children's names. My wife concocted a scheme to have me physically removed from my home in Elmwood Park, Illinois on June 6, 2005 by calling the police and initiating a fraudulent and false domestic battery charge. The police removed me from my home. I spent three days in jail, Cook County. I wasn't guilty wasn't guilty then, I'm not guilty now. Charges were later dropped, which led rise to my filing a malicious prosecution lawsuit for false arrest, false imprisonment, and civil conspiracy against the village of Elmwood Park, the mayor of Elmwood Park, Peter Silvestri, the chief of police of Elmwood Park, commissioner of police of Elmwood Park, the deputy chief of police of Elmwood Park, as well as about five police officers. My aunt, my, the damage that was done to me by the false arrest involved tearing my right rotator cuff. Young officers came into my home and assaulted and battered me and ended up tearing my right rotator cuff, which has restricted the movement of my right arm. 
brought a malicious prosecution, false arrest, civil rights case under 1983 against my former wife and these government officials who violated my civil rights. But what's worse than that is since June 6th of 19, excuse me, of 2005, I've not been allowed to parent with my children. Prior to that date, June 6th of 05, was nothing in the record, any record, public record, criminal record, I have no criminal record, that would have precluded me from being with my children. What I have learned in the research that I have done, not only as an executive of AEAE, but as a concerned person going through a divorce myself, is how widespread parental alienation syndrome is. And what is parental alienation syndrome? Primarily the custodian, custodial caretaker of the children, usually the woman, brainwashes the children against the non-custodial parent, the father, prevents the father from being with the children, and uses parental alienation syndrome to win custody or maintain custody. If it can be proven that a woman engages in parental alienation syndrome, she can lose custody and should lose custody. I believe my wife is clearly engaged in parental alienation syndrome. She won't even let me see my children. She concocted this scheme, had me arrested, removed from the house, locked up in Cook County Jail, all on frivolous grounds, all of which were dropped. In addition to that, she has continued to stalk me, this Loyola neonatal nurse, consistently for two and a half years during this divorce process. Today is March 7th, Friday, this morning, at about 7.30, she was out looking for me. I saw her, she had a camera, photographed me, followed me, continued stalking. Even though I had filed for an order of protection, which has now been consolidated with my divorce proceeding. Stalking is illegal. Stalking is crime. She engages in stalking. She engages in parental alienation syndrome, and she's made numerous false allegations to the Department of Children and Family Services against me. That's in Illinois. A children's Department, which regulates children, brought two fraudulent complaints, which were later dropped and uncovered. The reason why I'm discussing this with you tonight, telling you my personal story, this is a personal story of a lot of men who are going through divorce now. There is an extremely high rate of child abuse in fatherless families. The boys who were involved in the Columbine incident, the murderers, young boys, teenagers, they all came from homes which did not have a father. The violence uh, where boys engage against their mothers without a father present in the home is 13 times greater than when a father is not present. The children, the daughters of fatherless homes are more likely to engage in premarital sex and have children. And it's one of the reasons why I decided in uh, 06 to run for president of the United States as a third party candidate to urge the American public to re restore family values because it's really the family that makes up the reason why America can be very successful or why it can be destroyed. And what is the family? It's a father, it's a mother, it's children under the same roof, caring for their kids. I'm strongly against parental alienation syndrome. 
I believe it needs attention. I believe the public needs to be aware of it and to fight against it and to encourage courts to give father custody in situations where it can be proven that a woman has engaged in parental alienation syndrome. And I believe that any woman who engages in fraudulent arrests, complaints, fraudulent DCFS complaints, stalking, parental alienation syndrome that can be shown is unfit to have custody of the children. 